Uh, my name is Chris Rohner. Uh, I work for General Dynamics. Uh, and here to talk to you, I, I think, a little differently than um, speakers certainly earlier in the day, and, and certainly different than uh, our military friends who just talked today, because I am not part of that world. Uh, I'm part of a more of a state and local uh, emergency response world. And so I'm here with somewhat of a self serving message to you um, as a former. Uh, urban planner who has become, uh, who's moved professionally uh, from urban planning into emergency management and business continuity. Um, I'm here to tell you that there's a, there is a whole world out there of emergency response uh, industry uh, that's working in partnership with government, state, local, and federal government, um, and with private companies um, to have them better prepare themselves for um, what lies ahead, uh, whether it's climate change related or, or anything else. Just a little backstory on me. So I moved from uh, from urban planning in 2003. I took a job uh, as the director of emergency management planning at the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. So this is like two years after 9/11, um, and the emergency management landscape was then very really, uh, very focused on terrorism um, and human. Uh, you know, produced um, uh, events. Um, you know, I worked on mass prophylaxis planning and radiological dispersal devices and and um, and events like that for a couple of years. Very, uh, it was very popular. And when I say that, I mean that's what the federal government and state and local government. That's what they were focusing on. They were looking at the events that were happening or had happened, and they were and they you know they turn and they walk in the direction of the last event and they they try to solve that problem. Um, and then along came Katrina, and all of a sudden, a lot of that human, uh, I mean, certainly terrorist events and man-made events certainly still rain uh, heavily, but all of a sudden, we, we, meaning the emergency management world, kind of turned around and kind of started walking a little bit in a different direction, and started looking at man-made, or uh, at climate change-related uh, events, and um, whether you are a proponent of, or a believer in the science between, around climate change or not, um, and there may be a lot of consensus in this room, but certainly when you leave this room, things can uh, dramatically change. Um, all of a sudden, people were looking at how to respond to that as events and how to plan around them. And so, the word I'm here to talk to you about today is really planning. And I know it's a little self-serving because that's what I do is for a job, but that is what we need to do so much more of outside of this room. Um, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I work in business continuity, which I'll talk to you about, again, which is a specific world of emergency, of kind of a sideline to emergency management. But the fact is, is that planning and cooperation and talking to your neighbor um, and talking to your elected representatives and private partnerships between public and private companies does not happen as much as it needs to happen for us to be prepared for what we are doing. Um, you know, time, money, and whatever the current crisis of the day is gets in the way of uh, having a good discussion about what to do down the road. You know, earlier someone uh, put up a number uh, which is that every dollar spent on planning and mitigation was six dollars saved down the line. I, I, and I think that's, that's probably one of a million uh, versions of that. Um, you know, it can go from one dollar spent is one dollar saved, so one dollar spent is is a priceless something to save, right? If we're saving people's lives, there's no money for that, and so that type of level of communication that needs to take place for for events like that to take place. So, I'll talk to you a little bit about what business continuity. Is. So, um, there's emergency management and emergency response, right? Which is something bad happens. And um, there's a whole group of gals and guys who get out there and solve that problem, right? So um, post Sandy, New York City, uh, you end up with a situation where the Holland Tunnel is flooded, filled with water, uh, and so there's an emergency operational response piece to that, where uh, we need to we need to pump that tunnel out, and so there's a very complex group of uh, operations that are taking place to to uh, to, to solve that problem. Um, Business continuity is kind of the exact opposite of emergency response, even though it's part of the same thing, or it's all part of one big package, which is that day-to-day um, -day operations of businesses need to keep moving. And business continuity is really all about keeping those 
those day-to-day -day operations going. So while there are people out there solving the problem of the acute incident that needs to be resolved, the business continuity folks have been, for weeks or months or years in the past, trying to figure out how to keep normal operations going. And what does that really mean? Um, and so what that really means is looking at um, essential functions of your business. And so what I like to try to do, and this is what the business continuity world does, is that they, they go into an organization, whether it's, if it's a coup, if it's a government, you're going into a government agency or a private company uh, or an authority, uh, which I'm working with right now, and talking to people, understanding what they do for a living. And you'd think that would be uh, not that hard to do, but in fact, it's incredibly hard to do. Um, breaking down what people do, what their essential functions are. And then what we also do is, we, after we've broken down those essential functions, we look at the dependencies that they rely on. Uh, there's a lot of talk about supply chain management and what that means and cooperative agreements and all that type of stuff, which is fine. It's, it's a great um, bullet point. Um, but really, what you need to do is understand the processes of your business before you can decide what those supply chain pieces need to be. Who are those partnerships? You need to understand how your own business is going to operate um, before you um, can go out and make those decisions. Right? So you need to understand yourself better. Recovery time, how quickly your business operations needs to be back up and running. Something might need to start for 12 hours. Something might be able to sit for 30 days. It, does, it, it really depends. And so there's a whole planning process that um, revolves around that. Um, I'll just very quickly say two things about what I love, the, the state of good repair, which is when we all leave this room and we go out and we do planning and we talk to people uh, and we do our jobs, uh, I like to think of this. There's a state of good repair of infrastructure in America, um, and you know what? It's not good. Um, it's not good. Uh, and there, in general, we have thousands of bridges that need to be repaired, or roadways, or schools that need to be rebuilt, or public infrastructure that needs to be fixed. And that's one problem. And we all have to take care of that. And we should all be advocating for more infrastructure investment. The other is that there are a handful of unbelievably critical places in America where, if they were impacted or destroyed, it would be a tremendous impact on America, right? It's not just a general, you know, decay of infrastructure. It's particular places that really need to be work, looked at. And so, again, when we leave this room, we have to be thinking about that. The other piece is human capital, right? Part of the resilience is our, our human our capital, people who are walking down the streets and how they live and what they do. So, in my, one of the things I will focus on a lot of my work is trying to uh, increase personal preparedness to people. It's not just making sure your business is ready to operate, um, and it's not just, uh, it's really the people who work there. So we really promote like people having a family plan. I'll promote it, ready.gov, please go there. It has all kinds of free information on how to prepare your family. How many of you in this room have three days of water at home? How many of you don't need uh, have a, a way to charge your cell phone uh, at home? How many of you have you know, enough food to last for a week? So we, we all have our own, there's a level of personal responsibility that as a nation we need to uh, address. And you'd think it was easy, like here's a list of 10 things, go to the store, buy them, put them in your house. People don't do it. They don't do it. And, no matter, and it's, it's one of the hardest things in the emergency management world to try to figure out how to get people to be personally prepared. Um, all right, quickly, last thing. Um, I would say that the, 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 the public partnerships that are available to people are, are uh, from, let's start again. So there's a lot going on on the public sector government side that the private industry should be, should be looking to do. Right? Uh, I come from New York City. Uh, the city, uh, New York City's Emergency Management Department has an incredibly great uh, public-private partnership group of people. Staff who spend all their time reaching out to businesses, reaching out to, to other um, uh, to, to authorities and, and uh, NGOs and, and private companies to help engage them in the planning process, to include them in the planning process. Because public sector needs private sector's help and expertise and money, but guess what? The private sector needs that infrastructure. They need government. They need to understand, you know, what resources are, resources are available to them. Who's going to come help them? 
um, how quickly services might be repaired or brought back up to speed. So um, I guess my message going out to you when you leave here is go talk to other people. Like continue this dialogue. It's, it, it is about climate change, and I know this is a climate change thing, but as an emergency manager, uh, my bigger issue is talking to, talking to people about being prepared and what that means.